Good morning. We join New Beginnings Community Church. Our pastor is Pastor William Beasley Sr. We thank you for joining us and learning God's word. Join us as we sing, this is the day we do not own the rights to this music.
shall rejoice and be glad. Amen. We thank God for another day that he has made. He has allowed us to receive of his uh, new mercies. Mm -hmm. Morning by morning, his mercies are renewed. And so we thank God for his faithfulness. Amen. We know his compassion, they, they fail not, his kindness, they fail not. We thank him for being such an awesome God. Thank you most of all for being the only God. Yeah. Thank you. For being sovereign, the sovereign Lord, he's our only God, he's the only God. Scripture teaches that all other gods are the works of man's hand. Mm -hmm. We know that the Lord, our God, He is God. Amen. So we thank you this morning on, for giving us uh, another lesson, getting us prepared, getting us ready to meet His return. And uh, we said we want to be ready because the Lord is coming back. He's coming back soon. And as the people of God, we want to be ready. We don't want to miss that again. Mm -hmm. So we thank God for you being with us on tonight. I mean, this morning, rather. Thank God for the beginning of being present. Thank God for you on Zoom and those on Facebook Live and those on YouTube. Pray that the word of the Lord will bless your hearts, bless your minds. We have one this morning that we believe to be a good one. Uh, so we're going to pray. We're going to get into it. We bow our heads. The gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We come this morning just thanking you once again for another day. Uh, for your, your tender mercy and your kindness. Thank you for another opportunity to come before your presence. You said where two or three are gathered together in your name that you would be in the midst. So we give honor to the spirit of Christ this morning for being in our midst. We pray that you would lead and guide us open up our, our, our hearts and minds, give us the understanding that you would have us steady upon this morning, Lord God, to make it clear, make it plain unto us, Lord. We thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 This morning, we're coming out of the Gospel of Matthew, mm -hmm. 11th chapter. Very familiar passage. Of 11th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, and I'll be reading King James Version this morning only. You can follow in whatever translation that uh, you use. Matthew 11th chapter, and we'll read verses 27 uh, through verse 30. 27 says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Mm -hmm. 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 28. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul, verse 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm -hmm. For a little bit this morning, we're going to deal with uh, the 29th verse where it says, you shall find rest unto your souls. Mm -hmm. You shall find rest <laughs> unto your souls. Mm -hmm. And so, we thank God this morning for the word of God. The uh, Gospel of Matthew, uh, open or writing the, the, the book mm -hmm. of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the 27th verse uh, lets us know that all things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Mm -hmm. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and 
he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Right. Said it before, I'll say it again. God is revealed. God is revealed. Mm -hmm. And if the Spirit of the Lord does not reveal itself to you, then you won't know God. Mm -hmm. And all you will know is religious practice. All you will know is denomination. All you will know is the practice of religious ritual. Hmm. All right. Because it takes uh, John 6 and 44 says, I believe that it's except the Father uh, draw you unto mm -hmm. Christ whom he sent. Mm -hmm. He said, you can't come. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand uh, Jesus' mission or Jesus' assignment on earth, he came as Israel's Messiah. Mm -hmm. This is Matthew, and Matthew is writing to Israel, dealing with Israel. And Jesus was, Jesus was uh, not only was he manifested, but Jesus was prophesied Mm -hmm. to come uh, to be Israel's Messiah, to Amen. deliver Israel. Mm -hmm. And one time he was confronted with a Seraphonician woman and he told her it's not me to give the children's bread to the dog. Uh, before he said that, he told her, I believe he told her that he was only come, only sent to the house of the lost sheep. Israel. Right. So you have to understand uh, what's going on. We have to do we have to do more than just open our Bible and read and, and run with a, uh, a scripture. We we we're supposed to know and be able to keep it in context. Mm -hmm. Jesus Jesus is uh, at, at this time he's manifesting his earthly ministry. He's starting his ministry. John has already been imprisoned and beheaded. And John the Baptist has already come and tried to turn Israel back to the Lord. And so Jesus is talking to uh, the house of the Lord sheep of Israel because he is the sent one, he is the anointed one, he is. The Messiah. He Amen. is the deliverer. He is the Savior. And so he's letting them know in the 27th verse that all things are delivered unto me of my Father. Okay, let's jump down to our focus verse so we can take off. 29th verse says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. 28 verse says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. Now, that word labor suggests to us to toil, to be exhausted, to tire, wearying effort, worry, sorrow, labor. That word heavy laden is to be overburdened. Deals with difficulty and to pile up. You just have your overburden. You, you, you things know, seem to just overburden. pile up on you. Difficult things, not easy things, difficult mm -hmm. things. So his uh, his beseeching is to to the house of Israel. He said, "Come unto me, all you that uh, that you your weary efforts, you're, you're exhausted." Your, your labor, he said, in heavy labor. He said, if you're overburdened, you know, things are piling up. He said, and you shall uh, find rest unto your soul. Now, mm -hmm. that word rest, as it pertains to the text and what we're dealing with this morning, that word rest suggests to us peacefulness, consolation, relief. Oh, yeah. It's a 
settle and to refresh. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to hear what we're going to uh, say what yoke refers to so we can get that out of the way too. <laughs> now, that word yoke <coughs> suggests to be paired, team, coupling, harness, hitch, fasten, attach. Now, a yoke is something that connects two things or people usually in a way that unfairly limits freedom. Mm. A yoke. Mm. Now, as it pertains to Israel, when they speak about a yoke, they, they speak about how the oxen was yoked together mm. with the uh, wooden cross piece and yeah. uh, rope or whatever to yoke them together that they would plow forward mm -hmm. and so they were they were bound they were they were burdened they were burdened with this yoke across their shoulder and they were bound together right and the objective was for them to go forward in order to plow. Mm -hmm. So his parable, his parable is to Israel using uh, agricultural uh, elements because they understand it. Mm -hmm. And so what he's talking about to you and I, the church, he's talking about spiritual yokes, mm -hmm. spiritual uh, birds. And he's offering spiritual rest. Just as the oxen was physically burdened and yoked together, Israel was uh, physically burdened and yoked together uh, under the law by sin. Right. Scripture lets us know that, that sin is just, that the law is the sting of. I'm sorry, that, that sin is the, the sting of the law and, and it's the power of the law or the law is the power of sin. So they were yoked, they were yoked and they were toiling and they were laboring and they were heavy laden, uh, always trying to work through the bondage of sin or the bondage of the law which the law would never institute to say, it only exposed their faults because it was it was instituted because of transgression. Right. So they were yoked and they were laboring and, and, and they were exhausted and they were wearying efforts and they were overburdened with, with sins. Mm -hmm. And so here comes the Messiah and he's offering this rest for their soul. Mm -hmm. Just like he's offering the church, you and I, yeah. spiritual rest for our soul. Mm -hmm. He said, take my yoke upon me. Mm -hmm. He said, pair with me, team with me, couple with me. Yes. He said, my yoke uh, is easy. Mm -hmm. He said, my burden is light. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, he said, and learn of me. For I am meek and lonely in heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul. Now, rest is, is described as peacefulness, mm. consolation. So yeah. you get tired of toiling, mm. and, 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 and you know, when you're tired of toiling and, and, and wearying in your efforts, yes. and you are heavy laden and, and are overburdened, situations are difficult. Mm -hmm. He said, Come unto me. He said, Come unto me. Right. He said, Learn of me. My burden. Uh, he said, I am lowly. Mm -hmm. I, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Mm -hmm. And you shall find rest for your soul. Now, the rest is what we're going to deal with. And what he is. The rest that he is offering, he's offering, you have to catch this. The rest that he is offering you and I is 
rest to our soul. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Your soul and my soul is the only thing eternal. Your flesh is going back to the dust. Your spirit is going back to the creator who gave you. Your soul, my soul, is eternal. So Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the, the Savior of the world, he's offering you and I rest unto your soul. Rest unto your soul. Mm -hmm. If we take his yoke upon us, if we pair with him, if we couple with him, this is what he's offering you not eternal rest. Yeah. You have to speak the truth. And so uh, we're going to get into some scriptures. We're going to get into the lesson because the, the salvation for your soul is uh, to the scriptures we teach today. Today is the day of salvation. Yes, it is. Today is, to, is the day to save your soul. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about your flesh. Don't worry about your spirit. Scripture said we should all be changed <laughs> mm -hmm. in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, those of us that are alive and remain. Mm -hmm. Our flesh don't be changed from uh, terrestrial to celestial. In other words, from, we're gonna we're gonna go from a head a earthly body to a heavenly body. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about your flesh. We need to stop trying to appease the flesh because it's going back to the dust. Right. Our spirit is going back to the creator who gave it. Our soul is the only thing that's going to transition into eternity. Amen. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Jesus has come to give you and I rest unto our soul. And the rest, as it's described in this lesson, is peacefulness. It's consolation. He said, you are, you're, you're weary in your efforts. You're, you, you become exhausted. You're overburdened. Understand, he's, going, he's here to bring rest to your soul. Amen. <laughs> Woo. All right, let's get into it. Exodus. We're going to go, we're going to go uh, to the law to deal with Exodus. The scripture that teaches Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see that the Lord, Scripture says, one Lord, one faith, mm -hmm. one baptism. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna see that the Lord of Israel is the same Lord of the church. Amen. Amen. Exodus 33 and 14. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Talking to Moses. Talking to Moses. Exodus is just what it says. Exodus. They, getting ready. they were exiting. Hear, hear me well. They were exiting Egypt. What is Egypt? Egypt was the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. He had just come, he had sent Moses to deliver his people from Pharaoh, the hard taskmaster who had them. Who had them bound or uh, you know had them in bondage. Yeah. Israel represents the house of bondage. Right. They had to toil. They were they were heavy laden, they were burdened, they had to build brick and mortar and all this type of stuff. And they had to build, they were overburdened. Right. And so the Lord sent Moses. Mm -hmm. To deliver his people from the house of bondage. He's trying to send the Holy Ghost to deliver you and I from the, the house of bondage or the bondage of sin. Mm -hmm. But as we see when we get into the lesson, you and I cannot have a spirit of unbelief because mm -hmm. that voids our salvation, that mm -hmm. voids our deliverance. In other words, as it pertains to the lesson, that voids our rest unto our soul mm -hmm. because we are still toiling. We're still exhausted trying to figure out, trying to bear the burdens when the scripture says, cast all your cares on him. 
Mm -hmm. He cares. But the problem that we have is we'll cast selective cares on the Lord, and then we'll keep some. <laughs> Because you know we can do we can handle better. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, twelve chapter, verse eight through ten. It says, "Ye shall not do after all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes." Verse nine. For ye are not as yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. Verse 10. But when ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, and when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about, so that he dwell in safety. Yeah. Listen. Uh Uh, the tenth verse says, and when he give you your rest from all your enemies round about. If you want uh, rest or peace from your enemies, you have to obey the word of God. Mm -hmm. He said, listen to what he said. Verse 8 said, he shall not do after all things, all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. We have to get out of that. They have a saying in the word now. I mean, I'm sorry. They have a saying in the world now okay. that I'm living my truth. <laughs> Jesus. That's so true. <laughs> and please, wow. people of God, don't fall for that. Because there, there is a saying in the world now where we're saying we, like, he's just living his truth or she's living her truth. Listen to the scriptures. Way back, way back. You shall not do after all the things that we do here today. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. Amen. God is not accepting you living your truth. Amen. He's not accepting me living my truth. Amen. All He's right. accepting us living the truth. Yeah. All right. All right. Verse 9 says, For ye, for ye are not as yet come to the rest, to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. They hadn't came to it yet. No. To the rest or the inheritance that the Lord promised them. No, you and I have not, <laughs> you and I have not reached eternal uh, life for our soul yet. Not yet. We haven't reached that yet. We have, we have rest for our soul <coughs> because we have the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And because we have, as Exodus says, we have the presence of God with us. Right. And so he's able to fight our battles, to fight our enemies. But just as in the Exodus, the night of that tenth plague, and the word of God said that Israel was supposed to stay in the house and behind the blood, and the death angel would pass over them. Yeah. Uh, you and I have to obey the same instruction. Yes. Those of us that have been baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sin, we have been covered by the blood. Yes, we have. We have been covered by the blood of the Lamb, mm -hmm. by Christ's blood. So we have to remain behind the blood. We have to remain in Christ yes, Lord. in order to receive uh, this rest mm -hmm. and this inheritance. Hear what he's saying. Uh, in verse 10, he said, but when you go over Jordan and dwell in the land, once again, this is Deuteronomy. This is the second reading of the law. I mean, this is the second reading of the Pentateuch of Moses. The first generation died in the wilderness. Yeah. This generation is 20 years old and younger. Right. Catch this. The first generation crossed the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. This generation just read across Jordan. Oh, okay. Baptized. They were both baptized with water. Peter said in the like <laughs> figure that water does also baptize you. I mean, I'm sorry. Peter said in the like figure that water does also now save you. Just as Israel 
first generation was saved through the Red Sea. Right. And Pharaoh and his army were drowned in it. Mm -hmm. This generation that is going over into the promised land, right. they had to pass through the Jordan. They had to be watched before they go into the promised land. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. We have to understand this is spiritual. It's not carnal. We have to get out of our carnal minds. And we have to get out our own understanding. The Bible says, the Lord said, his ways is not our ways. No, and his not. thoughts are not our thoughts. We have to take his yoke upon us. Learn, he said, learn of me. You and I can't tell God what to do based upon our education level or our financial level or whatever. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, I, I am meek and lowly in heart. In other words, he's, he's humble, he's gentle. Yeah. He said, and you shall find rest unto your soul. All right, let's, let's run a little on. Let's move <laughs> on a little on. Isaiah, Isaiah 28, verse 11 and 12. We have to read this with understanding. Isaiah 11 and 28, verse 11 says, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith, wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Okay. It is dangerous that we forfeit our peace, our rest, when we do not hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. When we make a determination within our mind that we are going to believe this word and not that word, we have. We have picked up an evil heart of unbelief. The Bible says man does not live by bread alone, Amen. but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. When you get to the point based on your understanding or your knowledge or whatever you base it on, and you pick and choose the word that you believe and the word you don't believe, Come on, Pastor. you're falling in a dangerous place. As it pertains to this lesson, you're forfeiting that rests unto your soul. Are you forfeiting that peacefulness or that consolation to your soul? And you are going to continue to toil and toil and be burdened and overburdened and be weary and, and your, your efforts is going to be weary and you're going to be exhausted. <laughs> you have to God. hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He said, he told uh, Joshua and the Deuteronomy told him, he said, you have not entered in to that rest and to that inheritance. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh you have to hear what the Spirit is saying. Now in Isaiah 28, the people, the nation, the priests, and the prophets, they all get they, they had all given themselves to act drunk. They were drunk. Wine, strong drink. They had become drunkards. Wow. The people the, the priests and the prophets had joined themselves to the nation, to the people, and become drunkards. Drinking, drunk off wine, and drunk off strong drink. Prior to this scripture, uh, the people were tired of, of hearing line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Mm. When you read that, when you study that, that statement was made in sarcasm, in negativity. Because they were tired of hearing rule after rule. They were tired of it. And so, the 11th verse, he said, For which daring lips and another tongue will I speak to these people. Right. The other tongue that he was going to speak to Israel with is the Assyrians. Mm. He allowed Israel to become captive yes. by the Assyrians. Because they had stopped listening to the priests and the prophets. Because they were drunkards. Mm -hmm. and, they, and, and they said they don't never prophesy nothing good. Just rule after rule after rule after rule after rule. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, well, I'm going to speak to these people with another tongue. Right. So he allowed Israel to be captive by Assyrians. Yeah. And, uh, and then in the 12th verse, 12 verse he okay. said, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshment, 
Yet they will not hear. So when we don't hear the word of God, when we don't hear the preaching of the gospel, when we don't believe the word of God, he said, this is the refreshing, this is the rest, or according to this lesson, this is the consolation or the peacefulness. We have forfeited our salvation because faith comes by hearing, Amen. hearing by the word of God. Amen. There is no other way of the salvation except by hearing the word of God. And the scripture says, how can they hear without a preacher? Right. And how can he preach except he be sent? Mm -hmm. Anyone that is sent of God speaks the word of God. All right. And you have All to right. hear the word of God. Oh. And you're dealing with rest unto your soul this morning. You're dealing with peace unto your soul. Or you can stay uh, yoked, coupled to your sins and keep your wearying effort and toiling if you want to. But you and I, we have rest. Right. We have help. We have salvation. But you have to uh, you have to give your life to Christ. You have to believe the gospel. You have to believe on Jesus Christ. And you have to obey the word. Most, more importantly, you have to obey the word. Obey the word. You have to obey the word. That is the most important. Because I must remind you that in the beginning was the word. Yes. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Mm -hmm. And the word became flesh. And the word was made flesh. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace mm -hmm. and truth. We're talking rest unto your soul. We're talking mm -hmm. peace unto your soul. Mm -hmm. Your soul is eternal. You're not going to be able to shut it off. You have to understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. Jeremiah, sixth chapter, on the worksheet it says, Oh Lord, I got to run now. That's 30 minutes. I got to run. <laughs> Jeremiah, the sixth chapter, verse 16 through 20. You can read that on your own. We're just going to do 16 on the worksheet. 16 says, uh, Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. But they said, We will not walk therein. Look at what the word of God is telling you, Eli. It's telling you, Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. There is a lot of ways. There's yeah. a lot of ways. There's a lot of denominations. There's a lot of religions. There's a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. Stand and look and see. Look at it. Check them out. He says, stand in the ways. He says, see and ask uh, for the old path. The old path. <laughs> All right. Seek and ask for the old path. The word of God. Amen. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. So you can ask for the word of God, the old path. He said, wherein is the good way? He said, walk therein, and you shall find rest for your soul. That's where you're going to find peace. That's where you're going to find consolation. That's where you're going to find relief. It's your faith in the word of God, your faith in the atoning uh, death of Jesus Christ. He, he was sent to be our Messiah, he propitiated mm -hmm. the sins. Yes, he did. Our salvation, our rest, our our consolation is found in Jesus Christ. Scripture says, "For neither is there salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven given by men whereby we must be saved." All right, I got to run. Romans five and one, and on the worksheet. It just copied Romans the fifth chapter, but it, that's the first verse. Uh, Romans 5 and 1 said, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, when you understand that rest, that spiritual rest unto your soul, you understand that that means peacefulness, mm -hmm. consolation, relief, to refresh. Then you understand Paul is addressing the church, the Romans. 
Yes. I'm sorry. Paul is address, addressing the saints. Thank you. That's all that wrong. That's his point. Mm-hmm. But there is no Roman church, so to speak. He's right. addressing uh, the saints. The saints are Roman. Mm-hmm. Roman Catholic, or not necessarily Roman Christian. So he's addressing the saints in Rome. in Rome that are in Rome. Mm-hmm. He's telling them, therefore, be justified by faith. He said, because you believe the gospel, and then you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, you were born again. He said, therefore, be justified by faith. He said, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this peace with this peace with God is uh, is peacefulness, so to speak. Right. We are not enmity to God. We are not. We don't oppose God. We are in good standing with God. Yes, yes. We are paired together. We're yoked together with God. We're paired together. Mm-hmm. And so we have this rest. Mm-hmm. You have to understand what he's saying. Because of our faith, because faith prompts you to obey the word of God. Yes. Scripture said, he that believeth and he is baptized shall be saved. You can't just say, I believe, but then don't continue on to finish the work of faith. Amen. The work of faith is he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And so he says, therefore being justified by faith, therefore being justified because you have uh, acted on your faith, you have fulfilled your faith mission. He said, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of Christ, the church, is no more at in enmity with God. We're no, we don't oppose God. We are at peace with God. Mm-hmm. We have rest with God. Mm-hmm. Ephesians, second chapter, the 14th verse. It says, For he is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of, part, of, part, of partition between us. Mm-hmm. So, in other words, Jesus Christ has broken down the, the wall of partition. Right. He has broken down the ethnicity, the, the, uh, the wall of the ethnicity. There's no more Jew. There's no more Gentile. There's no more Greek. None of that. He destroyed that. He, he destroyed that wall in his death, burial, and resurrection. Mm-hmm. It says, so for he is our peace. He is our rest. Yes, he, he is our rest. Who has made both one has broken down the middle wall. He, there is no more middle wall. Like I said, Romans, Romans 5 and 1 says we have peace with God. There's no more middle wall. We are not enmity to God. We're not uh, opposite of, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we're not opposed to God. Mm-hmm. The, he, the scripture said we can go bold before the throne of grace. Mm-hmm. There is no middle wall of partition. Come on, Pastor. You all right? Uh, I don't have time to explain it, so I'm not going to say it. Galatians 5 and 1. But, but, but understand, you, there is no more middle wall. There is no separation, in other words, no. in our ethnicity. Amen. There is no separation. We're talking spiritually. Right. Spiritually. There is no separation. He, he, he was sent to the nation of Israel. True enough. We understand that. But then after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, when the, when the veil was rent, here, here we understand that there is no more separ- separation between mm-hmm. ethnicity. So just as he is the Savior for Israel, he's the Savior for every other nation. Right. Uh, one Lord, one faith, yeah. one baptism. Amen. Uh, Galatians 5 and 1. It says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of abundance. Now, that yoke of abundance, right there, he's telling the Galatians not to go back under the law. Because, because of persecution. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let, me, let me break it down again. Because of over, being overburdened, being persecuted. Mm-hmm. Because of difficulties. Because of their faith in Christ, they were being persecuted. And some of them didn't want to deal with the persecution 
So they denounced Christ and was going back into Judaism, mm -hmm. back into the law. Mm -hmm. Or in other words, as Paul said, back into the yoke of bondage. Come on, Pastor. I know a lot of things happen in the <laughs> church, and 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 when and people get upset because of persecution, difficulties, and, and, and uh, misunderstanding, and they go back into the world, back into the sin, back into sin. But we are never encouraged to go back under the yoke of bondage. Amen. Scripture said, "He whom the Son sets free, He's free is free indeed." Mm -hmm. So you you when you find yourself overburdened or in difficult time, you have to stand still yes, Lord. and see the salvation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't make a move. Just stand still until the Lord delivers you. Mm -hmm. That's, God. That's what Israel had to do. They had the mountains on the side. Pharaoh was coming behind them. And they had the Red Sea in front of them. All right. Moses said, stand, stand ye still and, and watch the salvation of the Lord. And then the Lord pulled them through. Yes. Separated that Red Sea, oh, and they went right through on dry ground, yeah. and, and the waters came back and destroyed the enemy. Yes. You have to stand still and watch the, the, the <coughs> salvation of the Lord. Yes. Woo -hoo. Your ways is not His ways. Amen. Your ways and my ways are never going to deliver us. Mm -hmm. Speaking salvation, speaking spiritually. The only way you and I will be delivered is if our faith prompts us to obedience to the word. Right. Second Thessalonians 1 and 7. Mm -hmm. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Mm -hmm. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Mm -hmm. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. When the Lord when the Lord comes, when the Lord comes, those of you, those of us who are troubled, <laughs> those of us who are troubled, going to rest with, he said, rest with us. Amen. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed yes, Lord. from heaven oh, with his mighty angels. You have to understand uh, back in the onset, back in the uh, focus scriptures the, the Matthew 11 and 27 Jesus said look he said all things are delivered unto me of my father and all things are delivered unto Jesus by his father in other words your salvation and my salvation Jesus holds that he said I am the way yes. the truth and the life he said I am the door he said I am the bread of heaven <laughs> mm. Come on. There, there, you, you have to get this. There is no other way mm -hmm. for you and I to obtain salvation but to name Jesus. Come it's on. not found in our ethnicity, it's not found in our finance, it's not found in anything no. but the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It says, for it is the power of God unto salvation yes. to all those that believe, <coughs> to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. He said, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed uh, from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. We do a lot of studying and we do a lot of things like that to try to figure out. What are you trying to figure out? Mm. <laughs> Come on. What are you trying to figure out? I am the way. <laughs> what are you trying to figure out? There's only one way. Yes. Jesus declared to be the way. No one else has ever declared to be the way. What are you trying to step? What are you trying to figure out? It mm -hmm. just takes obedience. Yes, Lord. And without obedience, your faith is dead. The scripture said, just like the, the body without the spirit is dead. Mm -hmm. So is faith without the works or faith without the action is dead. Right. So you can say you have faith, but you're not doing the, the things of the word. Your faith is dead. Mm -hmm. All right, last one we're going to give you. Hebrews, fourth chapter, 
verse 9 through 11. It says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Yeah. Verse 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he has also ceased from his own works, mm -hmm. as God did from his. Oh God, <laughs> how plain is this? God created the heaven and earth and the host of it in six days. Mm -hmm. And on the seventh day, he did what? Rest. He ceased from his works. Right. He rested. <laughs> mm -hmm. Verse 9. He said, There <laughs> remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. When you cease from your works and you give your life to Jesus, yeah. and you cease from your works, you baptize in Jesus' name and you've been filled with the Holy Ghost and you're born again, you are yoked. Mm -hmm. together with the Lord. You are paired together with the Lord. And at that point, uh, the works we go on to do them, the Bible say, are the works that were from the foundation of the world. We, we, one of the biggest things that we have to understand is that once we become born again, mm -hmm. once we become redeemed, once the scripture said we were purchased with a price, we don't belong to ourselves. No, we don't. Our works should stop at that point. But so much of the Christian world seems to be working harder and harder as if to say it's going to be Jesus and me. <laughs> no. Um. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. It's going to be Jesus, period. Yes. Our rest is in him. Our peace is in him. But if we don't cease from our stuff, it's not going to be him and us. No, it's not. That verse says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. <laughs> Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. <laughs> there it is right there. When you are toiling and you are uh, working and laboring, for your salvation, mm -hmm. then you have fallen into that spirit of unbelief. Okay. You don't believe that your, your you don't believe that your salvation, first of all, came by Christ, and it comes through faith. You have to believe the word of God, and you have to obey the scriptures and all that they say. And so, as it is, uh, and you and you will find, if you want that rest, if you want that rest unto your soul, which your soul is eternal, either your soul will find rest eternally, or your soul will be tormented eternally. Mm -hmm. I know people don't like hell, but uh, the scripture says that death and hell, which is the grave, will be cast into the lake of fire. Lake of fire. Will be weeping and gnashing the teeth. So you have to understand what the scriptures are saying. Mm -hmm. Hell is the grave. Death, I mean, the grave and the death and the grave, or hell will be cast into the lake of fire. And so, as it is always, we encourage you to repent, mm -hmm. be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost and give you that rest unto your soul. Amen. Bow here. Be gracious in heaven, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We come this morning to thank you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. Thank you for the word, Lord God, that you have delivered unto us. We know that it's your will, Father, that we repent and be saved. It's not your will that any perish, but that we would all come to repentance. I pray that you would give us the faith, that you would increase our faith to believe and accept your word as it is. We ask, Father God, that you would look down on each and every one of us. And according to your will, that you would bless us according to our needs. And we praise you and we glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.